You ever play a guitar solo and then think to yourself, man, that was 10 times worse than I would have liked it to have sounded. Today, I'm gonna play you one of those solos, but then I'm gonna show you step by step how to make it 10 times better. To kick things off, I'm gonna play you a solo that I'm not particularly proud of. Here goes. So it's not terrible. We're not in the realm of Stevie T reacting to this in his next Guitar Fails video. Kind of bad. There aren't a ton of wrong notes or catastrophic moments, but to me it is completely boring. The first issue that I'll point out is it's just note after note after note. If music's a language, this solo has no punctuations. It's a run-on sentence. What I'm going to do now is play that solo again with a slight alteration. I'm going to leave some space here and there, which is going to create a sense of musical phrasing. Now the next problem that I want to address is it sounds like a bunch of disconnected ideas. It's like talking to someone who's had too much coffee. They start out by telling you about the local sports team, and then the next sentence they're talking about their gout, and then a split second later they're telling you about their childhood hamster. Nobody wants to listen to that. A good solo tells a story with themes and motifs connecting the ideas. So what I'm going to do is take the very first thing that I played in my solo and use that as a recurring motif that pops up in a number of different places. Now I'll let you know that this kind of analysis and instruction makes up the backbone for what I teach over my course platform, SamuraiGuitar3.com, where the holiday sale is on for one more week. If you enjoy this video, you'll certainly get a lot of my soloing courses. In the craft of soloing, I discuss the bigger ideas of musical storytelling, how to turn notes into a coherent solo. And in the style of soloing, we dive deep into the stylistic elements that bring a solo to life. Or if you're looking to understand music theory from the ground up, taught with the guitarist in mind, the rudiments is the course to start with, and beyond the basics carries on to an advanced level. And for one more week, you can get any course over there half off with promo code HOLIDAY22, or use that same promo code on any of the bundles to get multiple courses for the normal price of one. You can find more information at SamuraiGuitar3.com, I'll also put up links in the description. Anyways, let's get back to it. At this point we've got some phrasing, we've got some ideas, but the story doesn't go anywhere. Jimmy woke up, Jimmy had some breakfast, Jimmy watched Samurai guitarist videos all day, and Jimmy went to sleep. As much as I personally kind of like that story, it's not a good story because it doesn't go anywhere. In the second half of my solo, instead of going back to that original motif, I'm going to move on to something new, and I'm going to use notes that are higher than anything else I've played thus far, which should make things feel like they're moving forward. I'm going to let you in on a little trick that's often used in these situations. For this part, I'm going to switch over to my brightest sounding pickup, this change of tone is another one of those things that helps add a sense of direction. We're certainly making some progress here, but to my ear, this still sounds clunky. And one of the reasons for that is every one of my phrases ends on the same note, which is the root note of the key. In this situation, that's the A note. This is the note that offers the most resolution, it's home base, it's the easiest note for a soloist to gravitate towards. But if I always end my musical phrases here, everything just feels weighted down. Check out what it sounds like if I end some of my phrases on other notes. The other thing that's giving this solo <laughs> clunk is that every one of the phrases is more or less the same length, one bar. Interesting literature has sentences of varying length woven together to give a story its sense of flow. So listen now as I start some phrases earlier and extend other phrases to make them longer.
We've come a long way here and the infrastructure of this solo is significantly improved. Next, we're gonna look at some subtle elements that are gonna get things to kind of pop out a little bit. One of the finishing touches is thinking about your musical touch. If you got three guitar players to play the same musical idea, they're gonna play it three different ways. As important as it is to think about what notes I'm playing, it's also important to think about how I'm playing those notes. Take this one lick from the solo. Instead of just playing it all alternate pick like that, if I add some slides in there, it takes on a new character. Another flavor that I'm always keen to add is open strings. When used strategically, they can kind of act as a droning tone which fills up the sound nicely. So take the second phrase that I play, it sounds like this. If I take that lick and strategically let the E and B strings ring out, it gives me a sound that I quite enjoy. In a similar realm, I find two notes ringing out at the same time to be quite pleasing to my ear. I'll often pick two notes at the same time or a split second apart so that they mesh together. So take for example this phrase. If I incorporate the respective diatonic major and minor second intervals into that lick, it adds a fair bit of character. And now having made all these changes, I'm pretty happy with my solo. But if you buy all the best ingredients for a sandwich and then cheap out on the bread, your sandwich is never gonna be great. The backing track is the bread in my sandwich metaphor. And so far this backing track is pretty uninspired. It's just a bunch of instruments playing the same chords the same way over and over again. By orchestrating, arranging, and just making the rhythm section more interesting, it's gonna make the solo sound that much better. Check out how I might go about doing that. So far, you've heard my guitar exactly as I recorded it, but now going into the recording software and tweaking the sound is gonna be the final piece of the puzzle. I'm by no means a mixing engineer. I tend to keep things quite simple. A little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, some reverb, and then one of the tricks that I use is stereo delay, where the delay is different in either ear, which gives us a nice sense of space. Check out what the finished product sounds like. That, my friends, is how you make a guitar solo 10 times better. We only really scratched the surface with a number of these topics. If you'd like to go deeper, then the soloing bundle over my course platform was made with you in mind. And remember, for one more week, everything is on sale for the holidays. You can use promo code HOLIDAY22 on any individual course to get it half off, or use that same promo code on any of the bundles to get multiple courses for the normal price of one. It's gonna be a while before we do another sale like this one, so get it while the getting's good. You can find more information at samuraiguitar3.com. I've also put up links in the description. Thank you all for watching. If you want to check out another video like this one, you can hit that link up there. If you want to check out some of that Sammy G merch, you can find that at shopsamuraiguitarist.com. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of music-related content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.